Hey guys, my name's Dale, and today I'm gonna do something a little bit different. By different, I mean I'm gonna tell you a story, one that I hope you find funny, but I can definitely say it wasn't funny when it happened. Um, so this is the story when I beat up a drug dealer. So, for the setting, it all happened back in August of 2009, I would have been 14 years old at the time, and I donate my time at the fair. My family and I, we all volunteer, and we build stuff, we kind of fix stuff. Two hours later. And for opening night, um, which is when the story takes place, I was pretty tired by the end of it. It was 10 o'clock at night, so I go up to my dad, who's with my brothers and they're playing carnival events, and I ask for the keys. So, here we go. So, I'm walking in the parking lot, there's a huge parking lot, maybe about like half the size of a football field in terms of like width, it's long. So I'm walking all the way to the end, just kind of pushing the, the button to my dad's car to unlock it, to find it. And I get to the end, I'm like, ah, it's not the other end. So, I start walking back, and all of a sudden, two guys, one smoking a cigarette and another one who is the, uh, the, uh, the guy, they come out between two cars, and they look at me, and they're like, Hey kid, wanna buy some stuff? And of course, I'm like, no. So, he gets a little more serious. He's like, why not? And of course, I'm just thinking to myself, these are just two high schoolers trying to give me the spook. So, you know, I'm just I'm gonna give them a witty comment, you know, one that's pretty good, and I'll have the last laugh in his giant elaborate joke, you know. So I looked at him directly in the face and said, because I don't want to end up like you. <laughs> They weren't joking. They really were trying to sell me something, and that was not probably the wisest thing to say. So he just turns around and looks at his friend quickly, and he's like, I'm gonna kill this kid. And by now, I'm power walking away. So I get out my phone, I'm like, oh, 911, 911, and I just get like tackled in the back. I fall on the ground, and I'm like just rolling around with this guy, and it's really awkward. And then it happened. Where will you be when the adrenaline hits? <laughs> Jeez, I'm bro. <laughs> so weird. I was under an angry drug dealer with no sense of humor and a person who really needs to reevaluate their life decisions. But of course, it was just getting really awkward. I kept trying to push him off, he wouldn't get off, and I'm just yelling for help. So there are still, this is a parking lot, so there are people getting in their car, and they're just, I'm a pretty big guy, I'm six foot two, was probably like six foot at the time as well, and I, there's just people getting their car, they're kind of like looking like, I'm dealing with that. So they just get in their car and drive away. They had probably three people in the, like the whole time frame of this, get in their car and pretty much just drive away. So there is a security booth not that far away, probably a minute walk, like they could literally see, and they're like, stop! Stop! And I say it like that because they were like two old ladies in the booth. I understand I am from a small town and everybody feels kind of safe and we don't need to have all this elaborate security, but it's 10 o'clock at night and you have two old ladies at the ticket booth? No wonder Drugs McGee thought it was a great idea to attack me. He's full of great ideas. I'm just freaking out, and I actually did wrestling the year before, so yeah, believe that or not. Um, and I was like, okay, what what can I do here? I'm like, kind of like think like a million miles a minute. I'm like, sit on his chest. I remember a male senator. Gravity is on his chest. So if I can just get on his chest, um, I can pin him down. So that's basically what I try doing. I, I actually do it somehow. And we had like a moment. I was like looking in his face and he was looking at mine. And it, was, it was very special. I look at him in the face. I'm like, why did you do this to me? I did nothing to you. And he just looks at me. He's like, get off of me, man. He like spits at my face and starts kneeing the back. And I just black out and rage. Okay, so as I said, he had another friend and I could like see his friend in my peripheral vision the whole time, just smoking a cigarette. And the whole time I'm just thinking, you enjoy that cigarette and just stand over there. I don't need two people involved in this. But you know, now that I'm winning, people decide to show up and start lending a helping hand. Ah, but in all seriousness, thank you. So my dad works at our public high school, um, neither at the time, and so my dad's kind of friends with kind of the more rough kids, the kids who kind of like teachers are like, but my dad's cool with them. So four of them come around the corner and they're like, oh man, so they like pull me off and they, um, they, they knew me, so like, Dale? Because they didn't expect goody little two-shoes Dale to like be beating some guy in the face and because apparently that's what I was doing. I don't remember this, but apparently I was like blasting him in the face with my elbow. I'm like, I don't remember that. I don't remember that. But I sprained my elbow, um, or at least my, like, my arm, and I had it like in a spleen for like a week or so uh, after that. 
Um, no idea, like, I don't really remember that that much, but I just remember that I was, like, in flight or fight mode right at that moment. So, I uh, broke his nose, quite clearly, he gets up, he has a bloody nose, and, uh, he's just like, <gasps> Don't tell the police! Yeah, sure thing. And he just runs away with his little friend to, like, the other end of the, um, the field, or the, the parking lot, and we have, like, buildings out back, so we just, like, ran into, like, some tractor building where they, like, show off tractors. So, one of the guys, or a few of them, go and try to find my dad. So, just for reference, my dad is, like, six foot four, he is ginormous, and he, um, of course, becomes protective dad, um, at that moment. So, they find my dad, and they're like, Dale's been attacked, Dale's been attacked! And my dad's like, what? And so, all of a sudden, he, like, is like, where? And, like, this is a very scary voice, apparently, because that's the voice he came to me in. And he, like, they're like, over by the front gate. So, he goes running. But while that was happening, the security guy decides to finally show up and says to me, all nonchalant-like, Do we got a problem here? I'm like, yeah, I was attacked by a drug dealer, you know, just, you know, all... You know, everyday stuff. <laughs> yeah. So I'm like explaining to him the situation, and my dad like just comes running with like a small group of people behind him, and he gets to me, he's like, Where is he? Like in this very scary voice. Now, like I said, my dad is huge, and I'm pretty sure my dad would have just destroyed this person. <laughs> so, um, just for reference, the guy who attacked me was about the same height as me, and he would end up being 20 years old. He snuck into the fair by jumping over the fence, trying to get away from the police, who had, um, he's had multiple incidents of selling drugs, apparently. It was only my luck I would find him first, you know, so that way we could share all these wonderful memories with each other. So, they had, the police end up finding him, he was in uh, a building, because obviously they are already looking for him, so when they, they found him, they're like, ah, this must have been the guy who attacked Dale at the same time. So they bring me in, and I'm with my dad, my uncle, um, who is, like, uh, on the board of the fair, and I'm in this, like, little tractor building, and the guy's smoking a cigarette with his other buddy. And, of course, like I said, my dad is six foot four, huge guy. The guy was about the same size as me, so my dad still towered over him. Um, I would have been six foot at the time. And he just, like, sees me, and he's just, like, just all, doesn't even care, and asks me, is that the guy? I'm like, yeah, that's the guy. And the guy, smoking a cigarette, like, walks up to my father. A huge freaking father. And he gets right up and like looking at him, he's like, what you gonna do? And my dad is like literally trying to do everything he can not to just kill this guy. Because later he tell me, he's like, one thing about when like you have somebody who's aggressive, uh, like if they attack you, you get kind of spooked, but when it's your children, and you realize that a person like just literally attacked your child, it's just like parental instinct, just like search and destroy. So that's pretty much the mode my dad is in. But the police are like, Burke, don't do anything, we don't want to be sending you to jail too. So, my dad is, um, kind of, uh, trying to do everything in his power not to just, like, destroy this guy. <laughs> um, so, the police bring him away. And my dad gets me in the car, and my brother's taken by some other family. And we gotta go to the hospital, have pictures taken. I have, like, giant scars on my back, um, from when I was, like, pushed across the cement by him. Um... And I just get there, and they're like, Oh, you're, you're a hero! You said no to drugs! And I'm like, I should have just ran away from drugs at this point, because I didn't run fast enough. But they take pictures, I got some lollipops, or popsicles, I should say, and the pictures got to gotta do court stuff, whatever. And this maybe was about an hour, um, and we start leaving. So my dad and I are, like, leaving. My grandmother is freaking out. She's like, everybody's gonna have a walking buddy at night from now on. Um, anyway. Uh, this guy, the guy who's smoking a cigarette, the other guy who I was telling you before who didn't attack me, um, ends up wheeling in a guy in, um, to the hospital. Uh, and he looked like he literally had, like, a mental disorder, like, Down syndrome or something. He was just beaten so bad, and he's just, like, drooling and, like, can hardly move. Um, I, like, the guy looked, his face was so swollen, like, it was hard to recognize him, but it was actually the guy who attacked me. So, I'm, like, looking at my dad, and I'm like... That's the guy who attacked me. And my dad's like, what? And I'm like, that's the guy. I mean, he's got the guy who's wheeling him in who was the other guy with the guy. You know, the guy. He... So my dad's like, just looking, he's like, that's the guy. So he goes over and like gets a good look at the guy. And he gets in, in the ER. We're in the waiting room, so like we're at the ER. And he like looks at, points at the guy, he's like, that's the guy who attacked my son. And all the doctors just kind of like look over. And they are like, and you know he wasn't going to get any special treatment beyond what they had to give him. So 
Turns out, he did go to jail and he bailed himself out with his own money, which he owed to the people he was buying drugs from. So when he got out of jail, the crew that he bought drugs from demanded the money that he was exposed to be, like, making through selling drugs. He didn't have it, so they beat him near inches from death. So, pretty much, um, everybody thought I did that to him. So, I get back to school, and everybody heard about the drug dealer who was, like, almost killed, and everybody thought I did that. And I was like, uh, yes, yes. And if you come after me, you're gonna end up like Drugs McGee. <laughs> but no, I'm actually one of those kids who told the truth to de-escalate the situation. I did tell people I simply got on top of him and pretty much just destroyed his nose with my elbow and some other people got to him. But I really could have milked this. I should have just been like, it could still happen to you. <laughs> but I do have to frequently deal with people bringing it up into conversation by starting it off with, Hey Dale, remember that time you were beat up by that drug dealer? <laughs> And I have to look at them and be like, <clears throat> excuse me, um, I was the victorious one in that, you know, victorious, I, I beat up the drug dealer, not he didn't beat me up, I, I, I was kicking the crap out of him at the end of it. <laughs> I am the one who victors. But yeah, I actually fought a drug dealer, um, and beat him. Like I said, he was 20 years old at the time, so he's like six years older than me. I'm lucky he didn't have a knife. My mom was most worried about that. It wasn't the fact that it was after the fight was done. She's like, oh, you are so lucky he didn't have a knife. I was lucky. He was lucky he had somebody to pull me off of him to prevent his face from getting more elbow. You think I got these mad skills from watching Naruto? Mm -mm. But in all serious, I was actually worried about that during the battle and kept reaching for his arms and kind of like sweeping away to keep it, him like from pulling out something that could potentially be dangerous, you know. That said, after word got out to the fair of what I did, um, I ended up getting some free stuff. One of my favorite things was there was a lady who was drawing caricatures and she made this. It's one of the coolest things. I got that for free. Um, thanks Lorraine, uh, you're pretty, you're pretty cool, um, and yeah, that's one of the cool things I get out of it. But even with that, he did actually get the last laugh, in the sense that, um, I was expecting to go to court and get the day off from school to be able to brag about my impressive means of wrecking this guy, um, in a court of law. But he actually pled guilty, so I didn't even get a day off from school because of it, so I'm like... Uh, you get the last laugh this time, buddy. But you know the joke's on you because I'm making better life decisions. So, ha. And with all that said, that is the story. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, I definitely know I I didn't enjoy it when it happened, but it's a great story now. Um, and I, I did get a good life lesson out of it. I, I've actually had no desire throughout my life to ever drink or do drugs, and I'm, I haven't. And that's something I, I'm very... I'm adamant about not wanting to participate in simply because I always want to be 100% control of my actions, my decisions, and I just don't have a, a desire to. I know there are people who do wish to do recreational stuff, and that's your life, but me personally, I, I just I don't want to do it. And when people force me into it, they get a face full of elbow. <laughs> um, but no. Um, jokes aside, uh, that is it. So this is the new channel I'll be making some videos in um, with Matt, Jack, and Jabril. And uh, we'll be just kind of talking about everything else. I thought this would be kind of a different way to look at this. It doesn't need, just need to be about educational stuff, but just stuff that's kind of fun to share. And I, I thought that this would be kind of fun to share. I don't normally show the funny side of me. Um, I, at least I hope this is funny. If you didn't laugh at this, this is going to be really sad. And you're just like, stop this now. <laughs> but I will say that this has just been kind of a great way to kind of get involved in more projects and get more content out because the stuff on my own YouTube channel takes a lot of time and work to do. So with all that said, um, once again, I've already said that, but um, thank you for taking the time to watch, and I hope you enjoyed this, and stick around for more content here. Um, if you're interested, check out everybody's channel and mine at Think Fact. and if somebody offers you drugs, make sure they have a sense of humor. <laughs> have a good one, everybody.